But you want me to talk directly into the Yeah, camera? I talk to her, you know, this is for this is for the internet, so it's it's got to play a little bigger than usual. Right, I just didn't know if you wanted my eye line to be at, you know. Yeah, just right there. Okay. So you become more, uh, now, you know, I guess we should talk about this. You become very more professional and very more understanding of eye lines. And stuff. I mean, how, <laughs> how, how is it, because you, you're, in a way, you're TV personality, but you still have your day job. How, how, is, how is the balance of that? It's, it's an interesting balance, you know, you learn as you go along, and just like I learned, you know, here in the bedroom as I went along, I learned um, a little bit from every television show or, or any interview I do, and so I just try to be a good hooker and take it all with me. <laughs> now, now are, are people who come to visit and stuff, are they, are they taken back that the HBO cameras aren't here, or are they... <laughs> A lot of people think that the HBO cameras are, would be here, and so we have to explain that they're only here at certain times, and um, you know that you have to sign a waiver. We can't just put you on TV. You got to be aware of it. Um, so, and there's there so many people signing up to get on it, and you know, just begging me, emailing me all the time. Can I be one of your regulars so I can do a scene with you? So, um, it's starting. We're we're getting the word out there that they're we're not invaded by cameras. I saw, I saw the warning sign. They also pointing out that the HBO cameras aren't here all the time. Yeah, yeah, well, because people, you know, they want to be discreet, and um, we want to keep it discreet, so we, give, we let them know that they're not here. <laughs> now, now, in the first episode, when you, when you came here, you had your party, and then you, um, and then, and then you called your mom. I called my mom. Now, how, how has the relationship with your mom progressed as your, 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 your notoriety has progressed? You know, my relationship with my mom is is wonderful and always has been. You know, she's my biggest fan and, and um, a wonderful support system for me. Uh, my father now knows. I think at the time when I made that phone call to my mother, my father didn't know. Um, and now he does, and uh, he's, he's supportive as well. Um, this season you'll get to see my mom actually come out here and take her first visit to the Bunny Ranch. Yeah. She doesn't work, though. I wouldn't let her. Okay. So no, no mother-daughter tandems. No mother-daughter tandems. My mom's not a MILF. I mean, God bless her and I love her, but she's not a MILF. Wow. Sorry. So now, um, as far as going, now you're on the cover, you made the cover of Hustler and you're in Marie Claire at the same time. Talk, talk to me about the going between high fashion or, you know, that sort of magazine, and, and Hustler at the same time. Huh? Well, I didn't just make the cover of Hustler. I made the cover and Centerfold, which is, um, you know, pretty much unheard of. So, you know, that was such an honor. And, you know, sometimes it's difficult uh, when you're in prostitution to really feel accepted in the adult industry as far as the magazines. And, you know, I, I haven't done pornography, but, um, or, well, I guess everything I do is pornography. I haven't done any videos. So, you know, it's hard to feel as accepted. And so that, that sort of you know, secured myself in the sex industry as being acknowledged for providing a great service. Um, and then, you know, the exact opposite to go to Marie Claire, which is, you know, such a focus less on my physical appearance and more on, you know, me and my background and, and what brought me here. So it was like in the same month I got extremes and you get to see all sides of me. So it was great. I like it. Now, now Mike and Julianne, the, I guess that's the name of it, the Fox Juliet. Morning Julianne, yeah. the Fox <laughs> But the Fox, the Fox, well, it's Fox produced show. Right. Now they want you back as a regular, I've heard, as a regular yeah. guest. Yeah, you know, um, the Mike and Juliet show was a wonderful show to do, and I think they were a little surprised by how, um, I don't want to toot my own horn, but how educated and, you know, I can, I can put together a complete sentence and I can defend myself and, um, you know, change people's opinions about this business. And so, yeah, they've invited me to come back on and I'm very excited. Now, do you do, in a way, you and Dan, Dennis are like a, a unique tandem because people, when they are used to guys who, you know, people who run a house like this and people who work there, to not being defensible, but more, more being caricature. Do you, think, do, you, do you think you've ushered in a new level of how people approach the business? Well, I think over the years, America has been shocked by, you know, different sexual fetishes and, you know, sex is so in your face now that that's that doesn't shock them anymore. I think, you know, where it's, um, what's benefited me is showing people that I don't fit into the stereotypes of a typical prostitute. Dennis doesn't fit into the stereotypes as a pimp. And so, um, you know, that's fared me very well and it does change people's opinion about this business, which it should because this business can be a great asset to, to the community and if they're not aware of how it works and the people who work there and, um, you know, the process of it all, they'll never know. And if it comes time for them to vote, uh, they, now at least they'll have all the information. Now, um, 
how um uh, sorry. So now, now the question is, because you're on the replay, is which which issue did you send to mom first? <laughs> mom actually got sent the hustler first <laughs> because uh, that's the one I got. I received first. I, you know, I had a um, an advanced copy of that. So mom definitely got the hustler first. Uh, kind of like my birth, she saw me nude before I could talk. So it's like sort of the same way. Now, um, now, how is your how is your relationship or your what you do here at the house? all changed as as your your time here has changed how if you you know do you do you do more do you, are you here more or do you do more um uh, arranged you know prearranged dates and stuff parties i ha you know i've been very lucky um providing a good service from day one you know i have i have a good base of clients that um take care of me and i take care of them and so most of the time if you were to walk in the doors i might be milling around here and you can ask for me but i don't always uh run to the lineup Shh, don't tell anyone so <laughs> the best way is just to make an appointment with me and that way um, i always make sure i'm available for you and plus you get more bang for your buck by taking your time out to specifically come and see me so i'm very lucky that and, and how it took much, me a couple years. <laughs> how, how much time do you spend on the road doing promotions, promotional work now? My time on the road really depends on the month, depends on what's going on, you know. Um, I'll be on the road more if a story like, you know, the Governor Spitzer thing comes out again, um, or if we have a new television show coming out. So it just really depends. Month by month, it's different. And that's really what I like about this job, because it's it, no two days are ever the same, and no two months are ever alike, so. I mean, did you, did you ex... I, I'm guessing you didn't expect any of this when you initially wrote to Dennis and said, hey, I want to work here. No, I just expected to, you know, make enough money to go to grad school. <laughs> so um, I've made that and then some. But yeah, no, I never imagined that my life would um, take the turns that it has. But I firmly believe that life will take you where you need to go, whether you think you need to go there or not. And so I'm just enjoying being here. How about the music? Now, you... you You've been performing, I've heard, after the, the Cat House the Musical, you've been in demand. I have been performing, you know, Cat House the Musical really broke me out of my shy shell of singing, and so I've been exploiting that talent to, um, <laughs> as best as I can. You know, I really love performing, and I love being on stage, and uh, I do have a degree in music, so music's always been very near and dear to me and a big part of my life. So um, it's really exciting to see how coming to the Bunny Ranch, something really uh, seemingly far off from music, can ultimately tie me back in and, and propel me to the next level. So I'm really excited. Now you're performing live at I have the venues? Been, I have been performing live. I performed at the House of Blues in, in Hollywood twice, um, the Hard Rock in Las Vegas, the Fillmore in San Francisco, and uh, going to be going in the studio and working with a wonderful producer, uh, Mark Hudson, um, here shortly, this month. So oh. I'm really excited. I'll get to display all my oral skills. <laughs> the things that come out, not just go in. <laughs> Now, now, did you ever make, because I know when we did the interview the first time, I, I joked with you about the idea of getting a hold of the, the episode and cutting just the musical moments so you can show them to all relatives combined without having to be squeamish. Did you ever do a G-rated cut? I never, you know, I never did a G-rated cut. I've given up, I've given up on protecting the family. You know, if they want to see it, they can see it. They can close their eyes. They're smart enough to figure out when something's coming up. But, um, you know, I'm, I'm just living my life and, uh, I've been very blessed that my family is so accepting and loving, and um, it really is unconditional support that I have from them. So um, they get they get the full version. They edit it themselves. I don't have time. <laughs> yeah. Now, what 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 keeps you stable? I mean, because this is this is a business, music business especially, but music you're in music, you're in TV, and you got your day job here. What, what keeps you stable from not falling completely into some sort of unreality bliss? Mom and Dad keep me stable. I mean, especially Mom. Um, I mean, we talk so many times. I mean, I've already talked to her twice today. You know, she really is my best friend. And, um, you know, you can't float away when it comes to your mom. She's always going to keep you in check. She's always going to let you know um, how it is and tell it like it is. And she always has your best interest in heart, even if it's not what you want to hear. So, yeah, it's definitely um, my family. And, you know, just knowing where I come from that, that keeps me grounded.